Welcome to the Predictable Revenue Podcast, where sales leaders teach you what's working for them and how you can build it yourself. This episode of the Predictable Revenue Podcast is brought to you by our sales coaching and consulting services. Are you looking to create repeatable, scalable, and predictable revenue? We've helped thousands of companies grow their business with tailored expert advice backed by testing to ensure they establish the best practices that'll work for them. Head over to bit.ly forward slash predictable revenue coaching to learn more. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Predictable Revenue Podcast. I'm really excited to have today's guest on. He's really special and close to me, and we've been working together for three years. So it's an absolute treat to have somebody, a colleague, join me on the podcast. It's not all that often that that happens. So I'm really excited. And today we're going to talk about something that is equally dear to my heart, and it's uh, about talent management of your SDRs, their growth, um, how to develop them, how to kind of build a career path for them internally, externally, whatever, and kind of the impacts that that uh, has on an organization. And so, yeah, I'm your host, Sarah Hicks. And today on the Predictable Revenue Podcast, I'm going to be chatting to an expert about why SDR talent management is so important. So he's the VP Revenue at Predictable Revenue and once unknowingly pet a wolf on a golf course bold move. Uh, He spent 10 plus years in sales uh, as a sales rep manager and now at the VP level. So obviously an expert in this area. Um, And he has a a passion for seeing his direct reports reach their full potential. Um, He's most fulfilled when they push themselves to be their best and achieve what was once considered to them as impossible. So Julian Marcuse, welcome to the Predictable Revenue Podcast. Awesome. Lots of great to be here. Uh, long overdue and perfect yeah. segue. Yeah, based off of the uh, description, I'm excited to to get into what we're talking about here. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, so let's kind of start at the high level, the the strategic or, or managerial level here. Um, how do you think about building a career path for the SDR role? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's probably the most important piece. Like when I'm considering and 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 you know working with and, and mentoring direct reports, it's like that's really the the highest level of what I'm what I'm focusing on, uh, and, and this really starts with I think when the SDR joins, and even before the SDR joins or, or any direct report joins the the organization, it's you know how often we hear in those conversations that it's important to the individual to have growth, both personal and mm-hmm. professional. Um, it's one thing that's consistent when you're going through interview process, and and um, you know for me to to really have an employee who's fulfilled and and you know obviously delivering and, and how we need them to deliver. Uh, but also being very passionate about, you know, the contributions that they're making the organization. I think it's a key area of focus that uh, you need to have as a, as a people leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you mentioned that that's kind of comes into effect, even while you're hiring people like pre pre, even having that person in the seat. Um, so is that something that, you know, when you're busy recruiting, are you thinking about the kind of career path and who you even choose to put in that SDR role? Yeah, I mean it's part it's it's part of the conversation, right? With with any any candidate that's coming in, that's one thing that I love to get ahead of. It's um, hey, like here's here's what a career path at predictable revenue looks like. And the reality is you're gonna have SDRs or whether it be SDRs or, or anyone coming through your your Canada pipeline saying, Hey, I want growth, I want to take that next step. What does that look like? Like tell me what does a promotion look like at, at predictable revenue? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's you know, sometimes a tricky conversation. The best way to to attack that is is being transparent. Like the reality is. Um, you know, promotions have so many variables and, and taking that next step in, in your career um, has so many variables. And, you know, ultimately, it's important to be extremely transparent through that, you know, interview process where it's, hey, there's no guarantees. Like, I can't guarantee any SDR moving to a senior SDR, moving to your account executive or moving horizontally across the organization. Uh, there's other things that impact that. But what I can do is set that individual up um, for success as best as I possibly can, whether that means an internal move or, or an external move uh, and getting ahead of that during the interview process, making sure that the, the expectation is, hey, listen, you know, the first and foremost, the most important thing is coming in, delivering, executing uh, in your role, focusing on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when we're talking about career pathing and, and developing, really outlining what those what, what needs to be done to set yourself up for success, again, whether it be at predict revenue or at an external organization. Yeah, absolutely. So talk to me about that ongoing process. So you've got the person's in the seat They're They're doing that job. What's kind of the process that you're going through with those SDRs to kind of set them up for success or measure where they should go or any of that? Yeah. So it's, you know, 
what, what I love to do is like quarterly development plans, but, and don't just leave them every three months, like the, cascade those quarterly development plans into your weekly meetings, or if you're doing bi-weekly meetings or whatever the case might be um, with your, with your report. So like the quarterly development plans is really getting an understanding of like, what is, what, what really is important to the individual? Do they want to stay within sales? Do they want to move to marketing? Do they want to, you know, go to account management, whatever the case is, and, and really trying to get in, a clear picture of what is important to them and, and how uh, and, and and why they want to go achieve kind of that that next step or that goal. Uh, and then from there, really, you know, making sure that you are um, coming up with a, I wouldn't say like a, it doesn't necessarily have to be a game plan by any stretch, but, um, and it, it will be very bespoke to each individual. Sometimes you're going to have a, you know, milestones and, hey, you need to achieve X by, by Z or whatever the case might be. But I think that the, the biggest key piece is to make sure that you're having quarterly development conversations where you're talking specifically around, uh, you know, what the long-term, short-term and long-term goals of, of your report are, um, and then building out around those and make sure you're checking in, right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's one thing that you often see is that, you, you have someone who comes in to an organization and they're really excited about, you know, doing everything that they can to contribute. And then at some point in time, get that tap on the shoulder or go through the you know, promotion process internally. Um, and then it kind of goes to the wayside. Uh, it's, it's always important to check in, you know, on, a, on again, if you're having your one-on-ones weekly, great. Talk about it for, for a few minutes every week or, or every other week, whatever that might look like for you guys internally. Mm -hmm. And so the kind of traditional or expected career path for many SDRs is to spend whatever amount of time in that SDR role and then move into the AE role. Um, which as you mentioned, there's only going to be a finite amount of AE roles available. Not every single SDR can be promoted into that role. Um, so I guess, what are you looking for, uh, to know if that person is right to move into that maybe small amount of, uh, AE slots or, or where else can you put them and what are you looking for to help you make that decision? Yeah, I think the key piece to me is desire. Like if, if you have a, you know, someone who's coming in as an SDR and they're, they're keen on being a career salesperson and that's, you know, uh, obvious day in and day out, then that's the kind of the one key piece for me. The first chip to fall is like, okay, this person, you know, they are, you're focused on, on being in sales and then wanting to move up within the sales department. And, and, and if that's the case, you know, they're likely going to be building out their, their competencies. So making sure, you know, what their intention is aligned with the actual actions that they're doing. Uh, if they're saying they want to, you know, move up into an account executive role uh, or, you know, senior account, whatever that might be within the sales department, then um, it's about, you know, the, the, the intent and, and, and again, you know, what they're doing and how they're going about it. Um, I think those are like the, the reality is not every SDR is going to be a great account executive and not every SDR wants to be an account executive. Um, so it's all about intent first, um, and then making sure, like as the manager, you're you're identifying areas that that need to be built up. You're identifying, you know, maybe some gaps uh, that the that you have observed being a manager of that SDR has to you know make them the best SDR to to make that next step as an account executive. And then from that point forward, depending on you know the organization and and what that jump looks like, there's there's a lot of other you know things that you can. You know, focus on and bring those SDRs onto you know calls with the account executives if, if they're you know not on them already. Uh, doing a bunch of different role playing and and you know before even the 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 AE role becomes available, if that is something that mm. SDR desires and they're showing that, you can start prepping them for that you know AE role. And then the hope is again you have that AE role internally. But if their desire as an SDR is to move into an AE, they've been crushing it as an SDR for 12, 18 months there's nothing internally, then again, it's my job to say, hey, we need to facilitate something externally so you can take that next step in your career. You, you know, you, you can't you can't put a cap on really great, great people if you don't have a, mm -hmm. a role open for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then another kind of common path that I think, you know, a lot of junior people kind of have aspirationally is moving into management. Um, how do you prime people for that? What are you looking for there? Yeah, the, I mean, there's, a, there's much more overlap, you know, from an SDR to an account executive in terms of the competencies. When you start getting into people leadership, it's a, it's a whole other level up. Uh, it's a, a complete different person, uh, potentially, that, that is, is going to do really well in that role. Um, so uh, again, if, if you know, someone desires as an SDR to, to be a people leader at some point in their career, it's up to me to work with that SDR um, to, to really 
uh, you know, focus on uh, what what makes a really great leader, and you know, really carving that out again through the development plans, through the, the weekly one on ones. Um, you know, whether it be carving out additional sessions to just focus on specific leadership competencies and walking through, walking them through specific scenarios. Like my whole goal is to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to get that person ready. Um, and if they can take the next step, great. Uh, and, and if not, then I, you know, I take some responsibility for that. I need to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to, you know, really round out their competencies. Now, whether it be, you know, whether it be a manager, a people manager, or whether it be, you know, an individual contributor as an account executive. Right. Right. And I guess that's, it's simple enough for you to do that as a sales leader, when you're kind of preparing them for another role that is under your responsibility um, to kind of set them up that way. But what about if maybe that opportunity is in a different department? What what can a leader like yourself do to prepare somebody to move outside of your department, but stay within New York? Yeah, so this, I mean, this is going to vary from, from organization to organization. You know, I've worked at, you know, some, you know, companies that have great, you know, internal movement paths. And you have, you know, the HR department facilitating it. And there's, you know, the, the first place they look is internally, to, you know, to, to go from department to, to department. But sometimes that's not the case. And if, not, if that's not the case, it's up to me to be the, you know, the individual's leader to go you know, across department, whether it be to, to marketing or wherever it might be, uh, and have a conversation with the leader of that you know, department and, and you know, facilitate even one-to-ones with my SDR with the, the head of marketing or, or one-to-ones with uh, you know, my SDR with the head of the, the account management team. So um, I think like if, if you're an organization that, that doesn't have a, a process in place that really is you know, uh, an advocate for internal movement or, or, or there's you know, a system where you can you know, jump from one department to the department, you as the leader need to take ownership and, and facilitate those conversations um, and again, really, ideally, do the same thing if, if it is your direct report where you're you're having the the leader of the the alternate department come in and and build up those competencies, or even identify some areas of of opportunity where that that individual contributor could could focus on to potentially make that transition uh, a little bit more likely. Yeah, absolutely. And what is the impact that you see? Um, on SDRs. So when you're, when you're putting this kind of focus and emphasis on their career path and you're being transparent from the beginning, uh, what kind of impact do you see on, on the SDR in that role? Yeah. I mean, for me, there's a handful of things. It, it, it obviously has direct impact on culture, but there's, you know, a level of, of, of trust and, and alignment. Like the reality is, and another thing that I say to any SDR, even through the hiring process is an SDR has a shelf life. Like I, I, I don't know one SDR who's been an SDR for 25 years and you know, that, that just doesn't exist. And if it does, and I'd love to see it, but it's, it's unlikely. Um, so, you know, just, just being transparent um, around that from, from the get-go is, is, you know, you're starting to build trust and, you know, and it's, it's tough to fake trust a lot of the time. So, you know, for me, it starts right when you get that first interview uh, with that candidate. And, and as you're, you know, having these conversations around their, their trajectory, um, their, their, their talent management, and it's, it's going to make the, the SDR typically, and I don't like to use the word like, hey, we're going to retain them for X or not, they're going to stick along because I'm, you know, I'm helping them develop. But that's not really the, the goal. But, you know, I'm looking out for their best interest, uh, professionally and personally. And if I'm having these conversations and being honest and open and transparent, um, the likelihood that that relationship with the SDR is going to be much more rich and the likelihood of that SDR, uh, you know, really giving it their all in that role um, that they're currently in is, mm-hmm. is, you know, there's, there's a higher chance of success there. So ultimately what it really comes down to, to me, it just creates a better working relationship, a more fruitful one for both myself and, and the, and the SDR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I will chime in my, with my two cents here because I have been on that receiving end of exactly what you're talking about from you um, as somebody who was in the SDR role um, with you as a sales manager. And I kind of hopped around across, across predictable revenue and um, definitely made some cross-departmental moves, but definitely um, having those constant conversations, having you always like felt like you had my back and we were, you know, working towards something as opposed to you looking at me as like, just the the means to the opportunity generation and like that's it um i think it does have a massive impact on culture like i've always felt like predictable revenue cares about its people uh more than it cares about their production in their role um 
But the trade-off being that I have been in predictable revenue for now many, many years, um, because I didn't have to leave to go find the next opportunity. Um, even though the next opportunity was not uh, available within the sales org, like exactly like you're talking about, there was no AE role available at the time when I was like kind of feeling ready to make the move out of the SDR role. So SDR management and in our, in our services department was there. That was a logical next step. And then Julian kind of facilitated that move for me over into that other department. So I absolutely, yeah, agree with kind of those impacts that you're talking about. And, and something that I've been reading about recently is this concept of, um, organizational commitment and kind of what, um, breeds that within a culture and talent management is one of the things that kind of all the literature points to. It's like, if you show your people that you're invested in them, you help them develop. There's this kind of, um, feeling of reciprocity that you feel towards the organization that you're with, but it's not just feeling like obligated. Oh, I've got to stay on and, you know, repay, uh, this person for helping me out. It's actually like, it's a mutual care. And I now am invested in the success of this org as it's invested in my success. And so I want to, want to strive for that. And yeah, I think, I think you're totally right. It's a huge cultural impact or yeah, and culture. Like, you know, if you're, if you're solely managing on inputs and outputs, that, that only gets you so far. Uh, but if you're managing on, you know, the talent management piece, the, the, the career development and, and really being an advocate for their growth, both professionally and personally, those like the inputs and outputs, they're, they're, they're going to naturally be in a, in a, you know, you don't even have to worry about that. It's something that you even have to look at. Like 90% of the time I don't have to, because, you know, we're focusing on other things that are much more mm -hmm. important and everything else is kind of like table stakes. And, yeah. and so if you're setting it up well, like it, it makes it easier to manage because you're building that trust up. You trust, they trust you, you trust them. Um, it, it, it makes things a, a whole heck of a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So that's the kind of impact on, on the SDR, on their, you know, potential experience and, and work, uh, quality of work life and all that stuff. Um, what do you see more organizationally, the impact of, um, kind of promoted from within and this idea of talent management, as opposed to just, you know, letting people leave and then bringing in new talent. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really there's pros to con and pros and cons to to you know both sides of it really. I think if you have um, a really great individual in the organization, uh, ultimately you want to do everything you can to retain them. Um, but that being said, I, you know I've seen it in the past where you have a great person but there's no role, and we're going to create a role for them. Mm -hmm. And that's like don't like don't do that like. It's just you create the role. There's, there's probably because you created a role. The expectations are probably not clear, and then you're just like setting, you know, the the I wouldn't say engagement, but it really is at that point. You're just, you're setting that you know individual up for for failure. So um, that's kind of like one thing that I always keep an eye out for is yes, if they're a great person, you want to keep them amazing, but be a little bit conscious about you know building and opening up a, a role specifically for that person not that it doesn't work i've seen it work but I, i've seen it you know you know fail a few times as well um you know when you're moving internally you know from department to, par to department there's there's so much knowledge that that individual is going to be bringing so much different perspective um that that individual is going to to bring so like that in itself is is such a huge benefit that, hey, if, if you're going from sales to marketing, so many different insights that the marketing team is going to learn within the first week of that salesperson being onboarded that, you know, might shape, you know, how they're putting on events or, or how they're writing blogs or whatever the case might be. So, um, you know, cross department knowledge share is absolutely huge. So that's one thing that like I'm a big advocate about when, when you have these internal transfers. Um, there's also an opportunity to, to really understand and, and look at potential areas where you can optimize and maybe areas that aren't as efficient because you know one department's doing it this way another department's doing it that way so there's a lot of collaboration there's there's a lot of a lot of really great things that can come from it mm -hmm. um but on, on the other side of the coin like if you're only hiring internally and you're only tapping uh really great uh, people on the shoulder for for promotions you're missing that outside perspective which sometimes can just can be just as important if not more important Mm -hmm. um, that, that you need to have in certain areas. And, and the higher you kind of go up the food chain in an organization, uh, the more important it, it becomes to have not only that internal perspective, but that external uh, perspective coming in as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's something I'm thinking of like on the pro side for, um, 
you know, for promoting from within, there's something to be said for the fact, I think, especially with a startup where you are lacking in the early days, a lot of like systems processes, a lot of the knowledge within the organization is uh, tribal knowledge. And it's sort of passed from person to person. Um, there's something to be said for promoting your good people there because the ramp time is virtually non-existent in that new role. Like maybe you're acquiring a couple new competencies, but like your knowledge base exists already. Um, you know, the market, you know, how you're positioned, you know, the ideal customer and all that sort of stuff. Um, but then I think you're, you're absolutely right. Something that can be really detrimental to an organization is when you become that echo chamber and you just do the same thing mm -hmm. and get stuck in those old patterns because nobody can come in and say like, Hey guys, that thing that you're doing sucks. That <laughs> I'm looking is at it. Broken. It's, it's really bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you're right. It's, it's, you need a mix of both. You can't just have absolutely. one or the other. You're going to be way too slow moving. If you get new people in, especially when we look at the senior hires, knowing that the ramp time has to be that much longer. Right. I think it's something like in the first 90 days, executives shouldn't even be making any change. They need to be doing like getting to know their team, getting to know the company, like all this stuff, especially obviously the larger the organization is. So it's going to be real slow if you're just yeah. bringing in a bunch of new people, but then on the flip side, you need the new people. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Tell me about, um, so, cause you've done this now for a few companies where you've been really invested in, in SDR growth and obviously talent management, all that stuff. What is, um, the kind of impact on the organization as a whole when it hasn't worked? Like, have you seen, uh, this kind of go wrong and, and I guess what are some of the risks that we can warn people about? Yeah, I think I, I kind of alluded to the fact of like creating roles just for the sake of creating roles. If the organization doesn't need a role, then it, that tends to get you in trouble, not not across the board, but tends to get you in trouble. Um, I've, you know, one, I wouldn't say key example is you have a really great person who works extremely hard and they're doing everything that they can to, to you know, succeed and, and deliver and execute uh, in the current role that they're at. And maybe they're not getting those results. And if they're that kind of like outlier where they're doing everything right, it's just not, it's just not happening for them. They're not mm -hmm. booking these, whatever the case might be. Um, and then, you know, being a little bit emotional about transitioning mm -hmm. that person out of that role to another role in the organization, being like, okay, this is a great person. Um, right. Let's just bring this, you know, bring, bring him or her on to, you know, a different department and they're going to thrive there. That's like blue guys, rainbows and lollipops, likely not going to happen <laughs> for various reasons. So um, I think it's like when, when you are having these, you know, conversations, when you are, you know, would it be you know career pathing planning talent management there has to be a level of objectivity and taking that you know emotion out of it um and when you don't you know take that emotion out of it and you're just hiring great people that you know maybe that don't deliver results and in promoting great people that don't deliver results then you start slowly losing out on the results mm -hmm. so the, the the i think the one big piece if, you, if you're not being objective around all this then you will impact your results in, in a negative way at some point in time uh, because yeah, they're, they're great culture fits. They're, they're awesome, you know, people and, and they really care about the company and they're doing everything that they can. Um, but there is an element that, Hey, we need to see results and, and, and see some deliveries. And sometimes that, that doesn't translate uh, and mm -hmm. obviously has a negative impact. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, culture, culture fit is obviously so important. It's like you, you don't want an employee that doesn't have that, but if you're looking at like skill, and, and, you know, target attainment or, or just, you know, doing the activity successfully, whatever they're supposed to be doing that versus culture fit. It's like, you need both, but you can't have just culture and you can't have just skill. Yeah. There, it has to be both. And, and unfortunately one doesn't like supersede the other in those circumstances. Okay. Well, we've talked about the management perspective, obviously setting up the SDRs for success, building their career paths, all that stuff, where they can go, what to look for, all that. Um, let's talk a little bit from the SDR perspective. If an SDR is sitting there going like, okay, I want to be able to grow in my organization. I want to put my best foot forward. I want to demonstrate to my superiors that I am, you know, um, going to be able to succeed in that next role too. What can an SDR do? Yeah. So I think going again, going back to like the, the interview process, if you're an SDR, you're looking for work and, and you're going through, you know, different organizations and, 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 you know, there's certain companies that are, that are promising you the world. Like, yeah, you know, three months as an SDR. And after that, you're going to be promoted to senior SDR. And then three months there, you can, 
I would just start asking some, you know, questions and like some pretty clear, you know, uh, questions and direct questions around, okay, how, like, why, how is this even, you know, you don't even know how I, if I can come in and perform as an SDR, like, what, what does that look like internally? Like, mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd really start um, being intentional about like the interview process and, and trying to get a, a keen understanding of, of what that looks like, you know, internally. Okay. You're telling me I'm going to be promoted in six months. Awesome. How, how are you going to facilitate that? How are you going to make sure that I'm set up for success to be promoted in, in six months? So it starts mm-hmm. really early on. And then what I tell, you know, any, any SDR that's coming into an organization, it's, you know, come in and, and crush it. Like that's like, come in and just like knock it out of the park. Like, you know, yeah. do the best that you can possibly do in the role and be like the top SDR, because if an opportunity does, you know, pop up, then and you're going through the internal, you know, interview process and you have an SDR who's, you know, top of top of the group, um, then that's a pretty darn good start. So like, you know, the first and most important thing for an SDR is you get into an organization, you do everything you can to, to be the best SDR that you can be or whatever, whatever individual contributor you're going to be. Um, really focus on that and, and you know, go in and crush it and then continue to, to work on, you know, those outside competencies. Like there's nothing more impressive for me if I have an SDR who, who just joined, they knock it out of the park, they have the desire to, to move into an account manager and they start just hammering me with, with questions around account management and they start mm-hmm. reading up on it and they start doing, you know, listening to podcasts and webinars and all that sort of stuff. And if they're going above and beyond and taking it, you know, on their own to, to develop their competencies that they don't have, then that's going to be hugely, hugely important to make sure that they're ready for the next step. But also like you know, for me, evaluating the, the, the situation objectively, it's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's someone that I want on my team. If they're delivering then then great. I think like, you know, we often get, um, you know, reports, you know, over my career where they, where they come and say, I want to do this. I want to do that, but they don't put any of the work in. And, yeah. you know, I can, I can lead, you know, the, the old saying, lead a horse to water, can't make them drink. You know, I can, I can tell, you know, someone to, to do this, that, or, mm-hmm. or recommend they do this or, or, or brush up on their skills here and there. But if they're not putting in the work to do it, then what yeah. is the intent? Are they just like telling me that they, they, they want a promotion because that's what people should be saying. Like, mm-hmm. I, so those are the kind of the two things, crush it, uh, make sure there's like clear expectations on what it looks like uh, in, in terms of that, you know, talent management piece and, and, and internally. It, and then, um, yeah, make sure that you're, uh, as an SDR, you're, you're being objective on, on the areas that you need to improve on to, to take that next step. Yeah. Absolutely. And if I, if I can give my perspective on that SDR piece, because having been in exactly, you know, that position, um, like you're saying, making yourself the obvious choice, like what can you do to make yourself the, the most obvious choice for that role that you're going into? And it's like you said, it's first of all, do your thing. No one has to even question that you're doing your thing incredibly well. You're hitting target. Then, like you said, the time with your manager doesn't have to be spent coaching, training, trying to make sure you're hitting quota, like trying to fix those things. You get to use your manager's time for something else, something potentially much more valuable and start to identify like, okay, Hey, what are the areas that I could improve on to go into this? Great. Now I'm going to go do it myself. I'm going to go do that. Or, I mean, in a lot of cases, maybe somebody joins and as an SDR, it's pretty common for people to kind of land in sales, right? Like not come out of college or high school and go like, I want to be an SDR. So they land in in, uh, an SDR role maybe they don't have a clear idea of where they want to go next, but they know they want to grow. They just don't know where, um, be that person who will volunteer to do the things that need to be done. Like, especially in a startup again, where people do wear many hats, um, somebody needs help with this thing, go do it, go spend some of your extra energy doing that and knock that out of the park. Somebody needs you to help copyright, do it, knock it out of the park. Someone needs help researching, go do it. And then you may end up you know, realizing, Hey, I really enjoyed that thing. That's where I want to grow into. Um, and again, then you make yourself the obvious choice. It's like, well, that person was helping us out with this now that there's, you know, enough capacity for a full role. Why don't we hire them into it or whatever? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Great point. There's, you know, many uh, stairs that come in that they don't know what they, they want to do. That's totally fine. Like, absolutely. But yeah, being exposed to certain areas of the business and, and raising your hand, like what, a, there's no better way to, to kind of, you know, career path yourself as to, you know, what you want to do moving forward. And, and you're not locked into anything either. You know, there's a, you can dabble here or there and, and really understand what's, uh, what's, what's interesting to you. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Well, I think we've kind of talked all the way through from the, the management perspective to what the SERs can do. It's a perfect place to wrap it up. If people want to learn more from you, Julian, if they want to get in touch with you, where can they do that? Yeah, um, I'll, uh, I'll drop my email in, in the comments. Um, that's probably the best way to do it or on LinkedIn. 
Um, I'm always checking in on LinkedIn. Perfect. Well, it was great having you on the podcast. Can't believe it's taken this long. So nice to have a colleague on. Yes. Excellent. Well, I appreciate the time. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. And thank you to all of you guys for joining us for another episode of the Predictable Revenue Podcast. Please, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button on YouTube so that you can be notified each week when we have great guests joining us like Julian and other revenue, marketing, sales, customer success, all that good stuff, leaders and experts. And um, we'll catch you next time. 